who will ever read this. My name is Charlie Sen. It's July 4th, 2022. It's been 49 years since that horrible event that forever changed your island. I have tried my hardest to forget those sad days. I can still hear their screams as I relive their deaths over and over again in my mind. I am 84 years old, my time is almost up, I just need to tell this story one last time to get it off my chest. I'm living lonesomely in the city of Liverpool, England. My wife Rachel passed many years ago, and I never really got a chance to say goodbye. I'm suffering from Alzheimer's disease and with my memory rapidly declining, I need to write down my story as soon as possible. I had my journals in a lock safe but time has not been so kind to them, so I have no choice but to write it all down based off my memory and a little help from my journals, from the pages that I can still read because you all need to know the truth about what happened all those years ago. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was 1973. The month was March, March 5th to be exact. It was a beautiful day in my opinion. The grass was green and vibrant. The sky was a bright blue without a cloud in sight. And Edward's paintbook sparkled in the sunlight. I've had this journal for a long time, and at first, when my wife got it, it became more of a paperweight than anything else, but I decided to bring it out now since there seems to be something going on here. Recently, Sir Topham Hatt, who runs the railway, signed an agreement for this new nuclear power plant to be built alongside the branch line leading to Brendam. Of all the places they could have put it, they had to put it near the most beautiful line, in my opinion. That's going to majorly affect tourism around here, and that's probably why the big man signed that contract to take nuclear waste to him from the mainland. He's got to regain that money somehow. Anyway, besides that, nothing's changed. Diesels have also been coming more and more often to Vickerstown, while steam engines rarely take the trains. It's a damn shame that those engines didn't have a place like soda to stay. What else? Edward's doing fine, and he's got a similar opinion to me about the power plant. It's going to be an eyesore, but he does like the idea of doing more work. I'm writing this while we wait for the all clear of Wellsworth, so I'll keep this book in the cab if we spot anything else going on. Well, as I said, if something strange happened, I'd write about it, and it seems like I was right. While I was talking to Leonard about how his son's birthday went, we could hear the sirens blowing in the distance. At first we were terrified, but lucky for us, Edward needed to go light engine back to Napa to pick up his next train. We threw Edward's throttle and we puffed down the line, seeing multiple firefighters speed past us when the line met the road side by side. Apparently, the sirens were coming from the power plant. Jesus, I hope that plant is torn down as soon as possible. When I got home this evening, I turned on the telly and found out that it was a drill. In case there was a containment breach, got to say, if they needed to do a drill where they have that many fire trucks, I don't think that plant's a safe thing to have on this island. God damn it, I knew this would happen.
We were waiting patiently at Wellsworth for the rest of our passengers to board the train. Meanwhile, unknown to me or Sydney, things were going wrong at the power plant. Jacob. What's the matter? Dennis just arrived and is ready to take the goods train. Is his train shunted? Yes, Duck shunted it about an hour ago. He's long gone by now. Cool. Also, what time is it? Oh, it's 2.33. Thanks. I can't wait to get out of this dump. What the hell? Hang on, what's going on? No time to explain. Sound the alarm! I'm on it. When a shattering explosion boomed in the distance, the sky went dark and this huge cloud was visible in the distance. Me and Sydney were scared beyond belief. We couldn't comprehend what was going on. I helped him climb out of the cab window onto the roof to see what was going on. What he saw, though, was terrifying. Sydney scampered back down as the passengers cleared the platform faster than I've ever seen before. We knew the shockwave would be coming fast. The guard blew his whistle. We released the brakes, hit the regulator, and pulled the whistle for dear life. Hoping to God that Cedric was still in the signal box, we sped out of the station at speed we'd never gone before. Thank God he was, because without him, we would have been killed. He switched the points, and shortly after, we heard the honking of a horn in the distance. Bertie crashed his way through the level crossing and sped alongside us, determined to escape. But it was soon cut short by the sounds of tires screeching and metal crashing. Edward towed down the line as his wheels pounded the rails fiercely. We soon saw Donald go in the opposite way, pulling slow goods. Edward whistled and yelled for him to grab us, but it was too late. We found out later that he didn't make it out alive, neither did William or Colin in his cab. We proceeded to push the old engine as far as we could, steam erupting from his valves and gauges. We prepared for the worst as we rocketed through Crosby. The shockwave finally hit us, and Jesus, it was strong. caused the glass in the coaches to shatter and rock them side to side. Edward's pony truck also derailed because of some jammed points, but those things didn't stop us. We soon arrived at a carriage shed down the line and we decided to give ourselves a chance to calm down, rest and think for a moment, while also checking over Edward and the passengers to see if any were injured. Luckily no one was. We'll leave here in a few hours. After staying at the carriage shed for about three hours, we made it safely to Napford and huddled everyone into the station buildings and offices. We heard on the radio that the entirety of Brendan was hit by the explosion and the death toll was unknown. I hope that Leonard got out of there alive, but that's a slim chance. 
Good evening, I'm Dr. Stuart Bailey. I've worked for the Atomic Energy Authority. I've worked for the AEE for 10 years, three of which I spent at AEE Winfrith near Dorset. I'm joined by my colleagues, Dr. Middleton and Dr. Dolby, both of which are my junior. At about 2.30 this afternoon, that's July 4th, the power station at Lower Brendam suffered a widespread system failure. Of four reactors online, only one is currently operating. The plant is currently running on backup power, with staff attempting to remedy the problem. The amount of radiation vented, or if radiation has been vented at all, is currently unknown. Teams from the Atomic Energy Authority have been dispatched to Lower Brendam to take radiation reading. Sadly, earlier this afternoon, Dennis was dispatched to the plant to collect a goods train headed to Tidmouth Hall. From the information we know, Dennis is presumed to be dead until further notice. We urge the citizens of Western Soto to stay in their homes until the state of emergency is lifted or an order to evacuate is given. Thank you.